Physical drift and inversion drift can move product away from a spray target and cause unintended yet significant crop damage. Physical drift can have a direct impact on you and or your neighbour. It can cause crop damage ranging from mild symptoms through to total crop loss. Its impact varies with the product used and the crop type being impacted. It's usually easy to trace as crop damage is greatest close to the spray source and reduces the further away you go. In contrast, inversion drift has the potential to not only impact your crops, but cause significant financial impact to sensitive crops across an entire region. It usually can't be traced, as it's often an accumulation of many spray sources. There can also be a long distance between crop damage and the source of the spray. Physical spray drift is influenced by environmental factors like wind speed, temperature and humidity, delta T, and operational factors including boom setup, droplet size and operating speed. Remember that the hills and terrain around you can create their own weather conditions. Always check the local weather forecast and conditions before you spray and plan your operation to match the available spray window. High wind speeds are the primary cause of off-target spray movement. Reduce this risk by spraying when the wind is between 3 and 20 km per hour for coarse to extremely coarse nozzles and 5 to 15 km for finer spray quality nozzles. Only spray when wind direction is away from sensitive crop areas. This may change if there's a buffer zone. Remember to keep monitoring wind direction as you spray, as it may change over time. It's also important to understand the impact temperature and humidity can have on the survival of spray droplets. Droplet survival is affected by the rate at which water is evaporated from it. As temperature increases and humidity decreases, droplets reduce in size as they move towards their target, resulting in greater potential for spray drift. Remember that as droplet size decreases, so does total spray water volume due to evaporation. This can negatively affect spray coverage and product efficacy. The indicator commonly used to measure the impact of temperature and humidity on droplet size is delta T. Note that with the shift to coarser spray nozzles, the importance of Delta T in determining optimal spray conditions has been reduced. Spraying conditions are optimal when Delta T is between 2 to 8. Caution is recommended when Delta T is below 2 or above 8 when using coarse spray quality nozzles. If prevailing weather conditions push Delta T above 10, you should either stop spraying or use very coarse to extremely coarse spray quality nozzles and a higher water rate. This is to compensate for the impact high evaporation rates have on droplet survival and product efficacy. To maximise product efficacy, you should also consider and monitor the health of the plant you're targeting. For weeds, target young, healthy and actively growing plants as they will be most receptive to the product. A plant under stress will not be as receptive and this can significantly reduce product efficacy. When first entering a paddock, be sure to set your boom height as this can have a significant impact on spray drift. The higher the spray release height above the target, the greater the distance the spray drift will travel. Maintaining a consistent boom height of 50 centimetres or lower above the spray target is important to ensure evenness of spray coverage across the target. An increase in boom height from 50 to 70 centimetres above the target can increase drift fourfold. Droplet size is also an important factor in minimising spray drift. Always use nozzles that will produce the droplet size stated on the product label. You should always select the coarsest spray quality that will provide an effective level of control. To compensate for any reduction in spray coverage resulting from using larger droplet sized nozzles, an increase in the spray water volume applied is recommended to maintain product efficacy. As a guide, droplets smaller than 150 microns are likely to be carried away by the wind, while droplets larger than 200 microns are likely to hit your target. 
It is also important to operate the nozzles at the pressure they are designed to deliver at set water volume, as changing nozzle pressure will alter the droplet spectrum produced and may result in the production of more smaller driftable droplets. Another factor to consider when spraying is operating speed. To minimise drift risk, keep your operating speed less than 18 km per hour with trailing rigs and 22 km per hour with self-propelled sprayers. This is because turbulent winds are produced behind the machine which may cause the spray to rise higher than the boom, resulting in an increase in the spray drift distance. While it's important to maintain operational efficiency, it's also important to consider the trade-off between higher speed and the negative impacts on product efficacy due to reduced coverage and the potential for spray drift. While the impact of physical drift can be managed or reduced by implementing good spray practices at a farm level, reducing the impacts of inversion drift is reliant on all growers across an entire region. It's also about being aware of the weather factors that can cause inversions and avoiding spraying when these conditions are present. Being able to identify when a surface temperature inversion occurs is essential. Inversions occur when the air at the ground level becomes cooler than higher air. Unlike warm air that rises, cool air is dense and remains at the surface. Spraying in these conditions traps product in the cool surface air layer, where a portion of the sprayed product applied can remain suspended and be moved off-site in the prevailing air currents. The product contained in these air currents can be carried long distances until they are returned back to the surface, where it may be deposited on sensitive crops. The only way to know if an inversion is present is to look for visual clues but you should expect an inversion to be present most nights from dusk up to an hour or so after sunrise. Some visual clues are air is still with no wind or very light winds, fog, smoke or dust hugging the ground, cumulus clouds that build up during the day collapse towards the evening and distant sounds become clearer. All these conditions allow the spray product to remain suspended in the air, which can then be moved off-site by wind currents as they develop. It's important to monitor for the changes in weather conditions that can lead to both physical and inversion drift. If there is an inversion, or you're not sure if one exists, you should not spray. Implementing best spray management practices on farms is in your hands but the benefits will be passed on to you and your neighbours. Be spray aware. More information on reducing spray drift risks can be found at grdc.com.au.